G'day guys, today we had on Dr. Dom who is a biological dentist and he is leading the forefront with teaching people how to do dentistry in a holistic, humanistic, whole body approach way because everything starts in your mouth within your body because before things get into your gut, affect your nervous system, it all starts in your mouth and we get into it. He shares key insights and key tools getting into how your mouth and your teeth and what you can actually do to optimize your health and take nothing else for less. So if you like this podcast, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also, if you're interested in my coaching, what I essentially do is I help entrepreneurs who are stuck and whose relationships and their health is declining and their mindset's declining. I help them be the best version of themselves that they can achieve their goals and their maximum potential at full blast. So if you guys get any value from this podcast or anything, yes, please subscribe, send us a like, and please check out Dr. Dom. He was amazing. Strap yourself in. This podcast was awesome, and I hope you guys like it as much as I did. Dr. Dom, thank you so much for coming on to the show. Hey, thank you so much for having me. That was really cool. So I've been chatting to first time I ever heard about you was on the Muscle Intelligence podcast and then had a podcast with Tim Byhacker and now here we are. Yeah, we made it finally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'd love to know what you've been learning recently. What have you been focusing on? What are some new lessons or things that you have learned which have sort of blown your mind? Yeah, basically I'm learning every single day i'm quite cu curious in upgrading my knowledge and everything so what i'm focusing right now is basically my whole concept making it even more perfect you know my, my concept is health starting in the mouse biological dentistry 2.0 the the overlap of high-tech dentistry functional medicine and biohacking and i'm building right now an extra center like adjacent to my clinic where we can sort out the whole biohacking sphere because I'm using a lot of these cutting edge tools um, during my procedures, as you know. And this is what something I have to focus on as a big project. I'm also focusing on, and this is where I learned the most about a course that I'm doing right now. So we had a beta course phase. Um, again, the blueprint to optimal health starting from the mouth. And we did 15 straight days with 20 beautiful souls like every evening because the idea was is it possible with all the knowledge i acquired over the last 20 years to get a real transformation when it comes to health and yeah it worked so it's all the 20 people that were allowed to come in it was live every single evening so it was a really hard commitment from both sides and um, but the whole journey starts from what is health really what was really the definition of health so that they understand that they have a body and everything and yeah so we we worked on on this side and making this bigger the course is going to be an onboarding for not just dentists and clients and patients but for everybody like also the whole team because 80 percent of health is in your hands obviously at one point you might need to see me as a specialist in biological dentistry to sort out things that that um, were in the, were like changed in your body epigenetically, like say metals or whatever dentist placed there. But 80% like nutrition, the lifestyle, the mindset, all these things are in your hands. And this is covered by that course. So this is a big thing and also a huge learning for me. Um, all these marketing things, I've never done anything of it. So I'm very interested. And also I'm always learning on my body. Like every day I'm trying new things out, experiment, see how I can get myself even younger, like yourself. I'm, I like to work out, I do a lot of training and, and see how I can, yeah, become younger and younger and younger, even though chronically I'm aging, I try to <laughs> be as young as possible. So it's all about health. So this is what interests, interests me. So what are the things that you have been trying, which aren't the usual? Because obviously the usual stuff is sleep. For me personally? Yeah. Yeah, so what we did lately, this is really cool. Um, good friend of mine, Justin McGuire, I don't know if you know him, but we should, def I should definitely link you up. Please. He is uh, also, he's a former bodybuilder, but also a legend when it comes to, I call him the blood detective, when it comes to functional medicine, all these things. So we kind of went into the nitty gritty of my genetics and my biochemistry and found a few entities that were not, yeah, that, that kind of were under underneath or at the root cause of all my 
weird blood words because I always had a little bit of weird blood words ever since I started this health journey. And we found just a helicobacter and we prepared everything extremely. So we worked a lot with peptides to kind of rebuild my whole thymus. We used a ton of thymus in alpha one, which is, you probably know about peptides, right? Yeah, I know about peptides. Yeah. Not on the level you do, obviously, but I know about peptides for sure. Yeah, peptides to, to, uh, times in F F1, and we did a lot, lot of uh, high dosage to really kind of like do a, po a poiesis, like si times poiesis, to prepare my body for basically for helicobacter, you need some antibiotics. And, and also a few critical things. I had a broken elbow for 25 years that I didn't really realize. And also there, I used a lot of peptides and ther therapies. And yeah, so I'm very interested in how can I use specific frequencies, but also specific, let's say, peptides to upregulate everything. As you know, the, the usual things like nutrition and diet and uh, is always interesting. So we, we did a lot of preparation, worked on an organic acid tests and all these different things. So we always look at the bigger picture uh, in the clinic and everywhere. And also always I'm starting with my body. So I always have to experiment, see and feel and on every level, like my physical body, mental, spiritual, and I'm also correlating everything with my training, with my nutrition. And what's so stunning, this is, might be very interesting also for your audience, is as I'm training, I always had a problem with, I felt that the left and the right side are just not aligned. Something is really off for all, forever. Like, and it felt like I, my left arm was more hunched over and a little bit of a scoliosis. And it was quite, it, it, those are just tensions that your body show and the basis for these tensions in your muscle is always the autonomic nervous system. And as we're talking about uh, the mouse, obviously the mouse is the entrance and an ex, uh, and a elongation of the, uh, of the nervous system. And any sort of stressor, being it in the mouth, or in my case, at this point of time, in the stomach, the entity, the helicobacter, leads to different stressors. Is a stressor leads to tensions. So what we found out because of the meridian system is that this tension in the stomach meridian led to me being a little bit hunched over. Didn't even realize it anymore because it's 20 years going on. But now as it's gone and was prepared very well, my body aligns itself and I can finally feel, oh, wow, my left shoulder is not is stabilizing again. My lat's working again because the, all these deep muscle lines are connected to your autonomic nervous system, can be stressed by root canal but also by, let's say, a yeast or fungi or candida. So I'm always looking for how to, yeah, how to increase optimal health or invest in optimal health and learn on the way. So this is why it's uh, every day is something new to learn from me. I couldn't imagine if we just pulled a regular person off the street, just grab someone real random, all the things that you can find out with them and their body, just by looking at all of that, that's insane. Yes, you have to learn this. We are able, as a biological dentist, if you trained, you can see the whole thing in your mouth. We will always see a, a panoramic x-ray and I can already tell you, okay, there has been work done from the dentist, which, which leaves you in a state of chronic stress because those things are not, they're not designed to be in your mouth. You shouldn't have any metals in your mouth. Obviously you should have healthy teeth. And it's not on me as a dentist that you ruined your teeth in the first place. but because there was reparation done, we need to focus this. So I can see at one glance, do you have tooth decay? Do you have gingivitis, periodontitis? Do you, have, that means inflammation in your gum. I can see that and there's restorations have been done. And I also will ask, are there any root canals or did you have any cavitations which stem from wisdom teeth re um, removal? And in the Western world, at least 80% of all people get their wisdom teeth removed because of spacing issues. So I have a ton of things that I can look at so for example, a gingivitis, the inflammation in your gum shows me that your whole mucosa, your whole intestines will probably be inflamed. So if it's bleeding in your gums, it's quite, quite clear that it's also bleeding in the intestines, meaning the leaky gum that you have here, it's kind of translating to the leaky gut that you have in your mouth. So you can see it as one cleanse, but this is nothing you learn in university. So this is all next level information that we kind of um, dial in to the whole concept and yeah because if you understand if you understand you have to understand immunology like really good you have to understand the basics you need to understand toxins you need to know how your body works with them and how this affects you need to know cytokines 
everybody knows that IL-6 causes huge problems. It can, it can um, block your whole um, hormone cycle. It can block your growth hormone, it can block everything, yeah. What is IL-6? IL-6 is a cytokine. Sorry, I'm, if I'm going too deep. That's okay, I'll uh, ask. So from COVID right now, a lot of you guys have heard about cytokine storms and that the immune system kind of communicates through these various chemicals and they are called cytokines. And the typical acute infection cytokines or inflammation, inflammatory cytokines are IL-6, it's interleukin-6, it's TNF-alpha, it's NF-kappa-B. So there's a critical few, let's say the bad guys. And those things are actually quite good for an acute phase to, because otherwise your body wouldn't repair anything. So if you break something or you cut yourself, you get red and swelling, those are, it's all cytokines, your immune system working. Or when you feel feverish or like you get tingling, um, that's not the virus you're feeling, that's your immune system working. Those are the cytokines, kind of, the response. But if you have that chronically in your body, elevated because of, let's say, an ongoing stressor like it could be the helicobacter, it could be the yeast, or a root canal with an inflammation on the tip, which is inside your jawbone, directly connected to this crazy brain nerve, which is called trigeminus, who also has a connection to the autonomic nervous system, main nerve vagus, the, the vagal nerve, and you understand how the physiology and biochemistry of your body work, then you know, wow, here's an ongoing stressor that can block, block basically everything, can block can lead to high cortisol, can block your sexual hormone, can block your um, growth hormone, everything. You just have to go into PubMed and just look for IL-6 and various things and you will find problems. And if I know as a biological dentist that these things are in the mouth of the patient, I, I need to have a solution to basically turn the, the clock backwards and give them a healthy mouse again uh, because our, body are, our bodies are kind of amazing and beautifully designed when we, when we um, arrive on Earth, so to speak. So epigenetics change it, and a huge epigenetic stressor is basically your mouth full of reparation work done, you understand? And it's oh, the yeah. entrance to your whole body. It's like the, everything goes through your mouth. Yeah? Dr. Dom, quick, look at my teeth over the, over the camera, quick. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yeah, through, through the video, you, it looks like you're perfect. You probably have no tubes to pay, right? Um, no, I don't think so. I do have like a, a wire behind from uh, braces. Metal? Um, no, it's like uses glue stuff that they used. What is it? Like some, just Yeah, they use like some glue stuff they put behind my um, teeth. Look into it. It might be a, a little metal wire inside there yeah. that is glued in there. There might be, okay, but there yeah. hasn't, yeah, hasn't been any um, tooth decay, which is really good. However, like, I'm, I'm just really interested in, in those things because I think a lot of people, um, you know, in terms of just, they wouldn't even have heard the concept before of that, you know, everything in terms of your central nervous system and your gut health and the bacteria in your gut and everything starts in your mouth. And that makes so much sense to me because obviously, obviously every time, you're eating something, you're swallowing it. <laughs> so whatever's yes. happening in here, it's just gonna get straight into your mouth. So it's yeah. so beautiful. Yeah, really understand, have to understand that your mouth, so in university as a conventional dentist, you train to see the mouth kind of like as a separate entity of your body where you can just repair these hard teeth. This makes total sense from a, a craftsman point of view because these teeth, when they're grown out, they kind of seem like they're just hard things to work on. And if they just break down, you just fill something in. And you know that the common perception of a dentist is more like the drill, fill and build thing. And most people actually hate to go see a dentist. And this is something we need to definitely change. I can tell you a little bit of history and why that came, or why, that, um, why it is like it is. So imagine, let's say 400 years ago in the wild, wild west, when, or 300 years ago in the wild, wild west, when you had like one time in the, every village, you had like one shop, a barber shop who could like cut your beard and your hair, do minor stitches and a little bit of surgeries, but also will give you five shots of tequila or whiskey and then just rips out a tooth. This is, called, this is the barber surgeon. This is where dentists come from. And this is basically what people still believe the dentist does. It's like, oh, it's going to hurt. He will probably drill. It also fill and then build, but also maybe rips out a tooth. And this needs to change totally because it is the entrance to your mouth. 
A healthy tooth is immune against tooth decay. A healthy gum is not inflamed. So basically there is no need for reparation if you train the people or the patients before and prevent tooth decay. Tooth decay is one of the three number one, uh, like if, I believe it's number one or number two most chronic of the most chronic diseases worldwide. Like almost everybody has tooth decay. It's a disease. It's not, it's not um, normal to get a decay. It's just your body is depleting. It's the wrong diet. It's the wrong nutrition. There's a lot of things that from, coming from the inside and the teeth show first. So if you have a rotten tooth, you know that something inside is also rotten. Also, as the teeth are connected to your trigeminal nerve, which is one of the brain nerves who starts in the, in the, in the brainstem, and this goes here and here and here, so and the trigeminal nerve, top of your lips and over your eyes. Yeah, the trigeminal nerve is um, can transfer everything that's in the mouth into the nervous system. Also, so if a tooth hurts, it can go various routes. There's also a chart that I'm always teaching. It's called the tooth meridian chart. It's the energy side of things. Meridians you might have heard of. It's Chinese medicine. We now know that it's kind of also regular medicine. It's the autonomic nervous system again, a little bit different. But let's say just because of the, how the autonomic nervous system works, it's connected to various organs. Every tooth has a specific connection to an organ. So also a tooth <laughs> can hurt because you have an inflammation in your gut. You understand? Wow. Because there, there are patients that I'm seeing, they have one root canal tooth. And I, I'm a dentist, trained dentist, so I know why, why we do a root canal. A root canal is a pain treatment. And if you have massive pain in your jaw, it's trigem it's nerve pain, neuralgia is a it's like massive pain. You cannot imagine it's way heavier than migraines. It's really extreme. It's like you're dying. So if you come a couple of times and your dentist won't know what to do, but obviously a dentist will wants to help you. He wants to get you out of pain. That's his training. So um what you will do is maybe do a root canals just to get you out of pain, but you have beautiful teeth and then you just killed one organ, but the cause of the problem was probably not the tooth without even having a big decay. It was just the industry behind it. So when it comes to dentistry, it's also an industry and there are tons of misconceptions behind it. So don't hate the player, which is the dentist. We might hate the game and we need to change it obviously to in order to to really train people and also health coaches uh, and trainers, whatever, that they need to have a look in the mouth because they can do the 80%, like everything with nutrition and lifestyle, but still don't feel like a superhuman. And then it is time to go see um, a biological dentist because there might be some health hazards lurking in your mouth then. Yeah. Um, if you understand how, it, this is also part of the cause and the cause you don't just learn about what is lurking in your mouth? Obviously, you have to because I want to prepare everybody out there. Whenever they see a dentist, they have to know, okay, I have metals. I need to remove them safely. Okay, what is my alternative for root canal? It's not a titanium implant, it's ceramic. And what is the cavitation? What is about the bite? So they will learn a little bit about, obviously, about these things. But then we go deep into the nutrition part. Food design concept is how I call it. And the micronutrients, the bone healing. Also, always connected to various organs. Why are we healing mouth and gut at the same time? All these things are going to be trained because I believe it's really important to empower people so that they can do things on their own and make it easy and systematically and for them. And this is what we did with the beta core space and it worked so far. So everybody stayed and is doing their job, changed their lifestyle and obviously I'm ongoingly helping them a little bit, but they understood the most important thing is for all you guys out there, you have to understand you have only one body. It's kind of like your house you're living in. And if you destroy it, not so good. So you have to invest in something called optimal health. Health is in medical terms is defined as absence of disease. Yeah. It's on my level. It's on my scale. It's the zero zero is health. And most people are on a zero to one. And if they go into the minus, they go to get a prescription and take some medication. But optimal health starts from zero to 10 or 100, whatever. It's an ongoing journey. It's a luxury that you need to invest in. It's kind of like investing, investing in, in money. You have to build it and 
whatever you do shouldn't bring you into the minus. So this is also how the food design concept is um, designed that we don't eat things that bring you into the minus every day. Um, and also obviously always for the teeth, it's always the same. Building your body and building your teeth is the same thing. You just have to understand you need to be anabolic and catabolic at the right times. And tooth decay is obviously a sign of mineral deficiencies, inflammation, and then you get soft teeth. It has a lot to do with blood sugar fluctuations. So whatever you do for your nutrition, your perfect teeth, your teeth will be perfect. You don't need to clean them even. Yeah? They're just hard as stone. So what are some of the most like common sort of solutions? Because I know there's very specific individualistic things, but just some of the most common solutions that you see along the board where it's like, whatever it is. You mean for dental things? Well, I mean for if we are talking in terms of, okay, so you see these dental things happening in this person's mouth and then they've got something going on in their gut, which is, this is maybe a common thing that happens. And then you'd be like, well, this is a common solution that we help people with. So not only do we look at their mouth of this, this, and this, but we encourage people to either do this, this, yes. or this. Yeah. Yes. So basically, we always have a look at your overall, overall health, obviously. So people inquire with, uh, with different medical questionnaires, and we, we look at the mouse as the mirror of your overall health or as the gateway to it. And the usual suspects are all chronic diseases we are, or, or even um, not feeling super, super human yet. So usual suspect, number one, chronic fatigue. Suspect number two, irritable bowel syndrome. Number three, skin rashes, inflammation, acne, um, postural problems, depression, anxiety, and even the, 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 the um, even things like cancer and multiple sclerosis, autoimmune disease, those are all on, on the rise. Ever since the zero years, so let's say for 20 years, we're having a, an, a, an epidemic of chronic disease and chronic inflammation is kind of at the forefront. And this is why we always treat everything. So in order to, to get to zero, you sometimes need to remove triggers from your mouth. And the common oral health hazards that happened over time due to reparation are, for example, metals, metal restorations. Like if you had a, a huge cavity or a huge um, decay, you might have a crown. And the crown looks maybe nice, but sometimes underneath the ceramics is a metal, metal base. Or you still have these silver fillings, silverish fillings. They are called amalgam fillings. That's just the marketing strategy they use. It's not silver. It's 50% mercury. And mercury what? is the most... Yes, and mercury is the most toxic, non-radioactive element known to men. And it's still being subsidized by insurance companies. And, be and because people don't know or not informed, they just choose the stuff that is for free. And then they end up having a black filling. And from, a from a, just a simple craftsman point of view, an amalgam filling works easy. It's really easy. You just uh, plump it in, that's it. But... If you know that this stuff is so toxic, I believe it shouldn't be in the mouth of patients. But what's really important right now is if you hear that or think, oh fuck, I have these, these uh, dark metal fillings, don't freak out. You need to find a strategy first because you had them in your mouth for a couple of years anyway, so you're chronically intoxicating anyways. But the most problems always happen when you remove those amalgam fillings without safety. Why? Because maybe on a daily basis, when you grind on, grind on those teeth or you chew or you drink acidic stuff, they release a certain amount of mercury, which is about two to three microns, some parts per million, like really tiny amounts, microns. And, but if you drill it out without safe protection, it could be like hundredfold more. And I've seen so many patients acquiring this systemic disease after that removal of the amalgam fillings because they did it wrong. This is why we teach um, how to remove amalgam safely. And there's a checklist in my Instagram feed. It's also obviously what we learned in the course. And so you have to first find some skilled practitioner who is able to do that for you before you freak out. This was be, so metals would be the number one, one, not the number one, but one of the three health hazards. Metals, the toxins, for example, the mercury, but also metals can be immunologically active 
because the immune system is designed to basically um, attack foreign invaders, proteins, whatever. But metals are also not specifically designed to be in your body. So your immune system might develop allergies to it. Not kind of, not allergies like skin rashes when you eat something and you have it in five minutes, but long-term allergies like um, type four uh, immunology um, allergies. I don't know in English right now. Um, you can, you know, you can type four, it's type four allergy. That means you basically build antibodies against it. And the antigen would be your cell, including the metal. So your body can really become allergic to gold, for example. Even though gold looks better and nicer, but if it's in your body, it can aggravate and, and also be a problem. So immunology, toxicology, and the third one for the metals is always an antenna. You're, you're living in an in a EMF world. You have 3G, 4G, 5G, a lot of electromagnetic fields. If you have any metal in your body, it will be a conductor or it will amplify all these waves. For example, if you have a phone call, yeah, if you have a phone call, there are studies showing it. If you have a phone call with your cell phone, normally the electromagnetic waves go to your phone and then back to the tower. But if you have an mercury filling, for example, it goes to the filling and, aggro and even um, more mercury vapor gets out because of the activation through the electromagnetic fields. And also your whole nervous system is, is actually electric. It's body electric. So you will change your whole electrics by having a antenna in your mouth. And this is just the metals. This is, I would say, this is health hazard number one. You should be aware of and then know, okay, what are the solutions? Obviously you already had tooth decay. Obviously you need to, to repair. So we will go with the most biocompatible solution which is, which is mostly ceramics. Depending on size and shape of the decay, you could use a composite filling or a partial crown or full crown, but we use material that are as biocompatible as possible. Ideally, you guys keep your real teeth because those are the most biocompatible things. And they are, your life, they are based on your lifestyle and nutrition and they're healed from the inside. So your teeth are hard as stone, hard as, hard as granite if you take care of them. Or I get mushy and soft as cheese if you're unlucky and didn't know what to do. Man. So those are just the metals. And <laughs> so what do you get in one more root canals? Yeah. Oh, what's like, just real simply, just a bit like people who are listening. They're like, they're worried. Like, if they're like, well, they're just worried. If they're just like, oh man, I want to make sure that I've got healthy teeth. And now I know that I need to heal this from the inside. You, is it just the standard? Do you recommend like diet, nutrition, sleep and exercise or is there anything specific to, have, to, have, to have the um, perfect teeth yes it is basically your lifestyle nutrition comes first so i developed a concept it's also in my book it's the food design concept and um, all my patients get a brochure up front where they know exactly what to do and what to, what what's the don't um side of things and to basically understand how to think in nutrients this is what we teach which nutrients are required that you get that build your teeth. Obviously cleaning is important when you had reparation work done. Also for you, as you have no problems like myself, we would also clean a little bit just for the smell of it yeah, because we don't want to sting or acquire anything. But if you eat good food, normally you have clean teeth just from eating the real foods. Whole foods will clean your teeth. Whereas if you start, if you eat like all the refined stuff and as you know, at least in the Western world, most foods that we eat or that we can get con like easily are loaded with what I call a core four. It's gluten, it's sugar-based, it's basically conventional dairy products and refined vegetable oils, or a mixture of all of it. And those things, they're not helping your body to grow and heal. They are the minus. That's what I, what I said at the beginning. Never go into the negative side of things because if you invest, it would be a bad strategy to lose money, never lose, never lose nutrients, never lose, never lose health in the first place. Health, when we go to optimal health. We want optimal health, that's what we want. That's we, what we want. That's not optimal health, health is a disease. <laughs> yes, yes, we want optimal health and this is an ongoing health journey. And I recommend to all my patients when they see us that, we, that they write a health journal because also the surgery maybe that I'm doing to remove the triggers, let's say I have to remove the root canals and place a ceramic implant, 
it's just a tiny thing. We just remove a few layers. They are important, but the 80% is always in the, in, the, in the patient's hands. Same thing with the cleaning. You heard, basically what you hear from dentists and what we learn in university is you have to clean your teeth twice a day, brush your teeth twice a day, maybe use some flossing once a day and maybe some mouth washes, right? M mouth rinses. That's five minutes of time investment and this should keep your teeth um, healthy and strong. No, you've been Ooh. tricked. Can I guess? Oh, what about, Can I guess that what all the stuff what? kills the bacteria in your mouth? Also, the chemicals kill the bacteria in your yeah. mouth. Yeah. Also, if they wouldn't, what about the rest of the day? This is 1440 minutes against five minutes of, of um, brushing. This is why periodontitis, which is the inflammation of the jaw bone underneath the, the gum, is 30% higher. This is why we have more tooth decay. That's why we have more problems, even though in a dental office, we clean and do prof professional cleaning and do all these strategies. It's still increasing because what we need to train people is nutrition, lifestyle, how to build the whole body. And this is before they see me, they start with the nutritional, the food design concept. They start with the right micronutrients, the right micronutri macronutrients, the right micronutrients. And then the, the, the cleaning strategy we do is also important. It's, it's quite basic. We, we, um, we avoid all the chemicals. That's the first thing. <laughs> Why? Why? Because your mouth is a huge microbiome. It is even, it's way more diversified than the gut microbiome. What? Yes. And it makes perfect sense because it has to, it is, it's kind of like the entrance. Everything comes into your mouth right away. As you know, little kids, they, for the first three years, they put everything in their mouth, like <laughs> everything. And the mouth and the microbiome changes within three days, depending on your lifestyle, on your diet. So if you, if your baby that gets breastfed, you have a total different microbiome than a baby that gets formula. And also, if you eat the standard American or the standard European diet, it's a total different microbiome in your mouth and also obviously in your gut than when you eat, let's say, a paleo-ish kind of diet or you look for the right food. It changes. And this is why you should not, not dis disinfect things on a daily basis. So fluoride, so right, for instance. What, yeah. to, sorry, I'll, I'll pause on fluoride. I just want to real quickly before we get on fluoride. What toothpaste do you use? There is not yet the perfect toothpaste. I'm working, <laughs> on, it. So many I'm working on it. Um, obviously, the easiest strategy is go to any natural natural store um, and buy one that is free of, let's say, free of at least fluoride, fr fluoride free of at least titanium dioxide, which is the white coloring. It's E171. They have to write it down. Titanium dioxide It's really an immune disruptor. It should be free of SLS, which is soap kind of, and there shouldn't be any sucralose in it. And um, like sweeteners, which makes actually no sense why they would put sweeteners in it, but they do because it tastes better. So you're kind of brushing your teeth with sugar. <laughs> makes <no> sense. <laughs> what, I, what we use is a, it's just most Good ones that are coming are coconut oil based, for example. They just use some um, essential oils, maybe, and yeah, are free of. That's more important. Go free of these things, and then just gently brush your teeth. We also, I also recommend coconut oil pulling every day mm -hmm. as a strategy to soothe your whole, yeah, your whole gums but also protect your teeth and also help your microbiome. You would use extra virgin coconut oil for it and just take it, that's the simplest version. Just take one big spoon, which is a tablespoon, right? T tablespoon of, um, yeah, big one. Yeah, of coconut. We use, we don't use that measurement. That's different in Germany. It's the big spoon. Yeah. It's, just a big spoon of, it's a big spoon full of coconut oil and Keep it in your mouth for at least five minutes, swish it around gently, and then important, spit it out. Just spit it out. You can also go up to 15, 20, 30 minutes, whatever you like to. The coconut oil has laureic acid in it, which is specifically antiviral and also antibacterial. So coconut oil is good. You can spice it a little bit with some, let's say essential peppermint oil so that it tastes like a chewing gum. 
could use various essential oils, clove, whatever, what comes to mind. Um, you cannot hurt it too much. And flossing is, in my opinion, not a good strategy. I wouldn't use it unless you had a ton of dental work done. If you had dental work done, like crown work, implants, whatever, you might need it because it's not your natural tooth structure anymore. But if you're healthy and have a perfect diet and or a very good diet and nutrition, and you don't have any decays, floss, what flossing for most people does is it disrupts the whole system. Why? Because when you floss, you rip through the teeth and most likely a little bit of bleeding afterwards. Not everybody is very sensitive with their hands. Most people just rip it through and then what happens is it bleeds. What does it mean if it bleeds? You kind of have a micro tear in your gum, which is again kind of leaky gut, an opening for all the bacteria that are living with you in the mouth inside of the system. Because mouth is outside body, like your skin, your mouth, you hold the whole tube that starts from your mouth to your back door is outside body. The skin is always outside body. As soon as you go inside the skin, there's a problem. We don't want to have things inside our body, inside our cells. So gum is protection layer. Yeah. And a ton, of, a ton of patients that I see, or that it's just normal. If you have metal restorations or root canals or whatever, if you look into the mouths of these patients, they always have a little bit of an inflammation around this tooth because of the immune system being in attack mode every single day. It bleeds a little bit every day. So you have an open wound every single day. Imagine you had an open wound on your finger every day. Would you do something? Yes. But you don't do it because you don't see it in your mouth. And it's a lot of the tooth, actually two thirds of the tooth are not even visible. They're inside the jaw. You only see the crown. But the two, this tooth, for example here, this one goes until here. It's Whoa. like, yeah, it's about like two and a half centimeters long, but you only see like a centimeter of it. And this is where the whole life part of the tooth is. is it's all inside the root. A tooth is a living organ. It is like the stomach, like the spleen, like whatever. There's blood supply, there's lymph supply, autonomic nervous system. And whenever you have a stress inside here, being it from various toxins or entities or inflammation, it will stress your whole body. So this is why I always say to my patients, we need to take the splinter out. And then you feel good because then your body can heal itself. That's what we have to do as a biology dentist. Take out these various splinters, but not without preparing the patient. The patient needs to be in a state of healing and anabolic. That's why the, my specialty is always the nutrition side of things, the, the micronutrients, the whole lifestyle piece, the other various cutting edge things. This is why I told you at the beginning, it's not dentistry, it's health optimization um, or whatever you want to call it, um, starting from the mouth. The focus is, obviously we have to repair this, but the focus will be, should be I don't want any of my patients, again, for having any dental problem. They can come for other treatments, hyperbaric oxygen, for IVs, for uh, red light therapy, for infrared saunas, for low level laser therapy, whatever. And maybe for cleaning in the mouth. But if they come with tooth decay, I know they ruined their lifestyle. So <laughs> I see it. <laughs> so what yeah, about, what about, you need what about ulcers? What about ulcers? Yeah. What about ulcers? ulcers? Yeah, I haven't asked. It's the, I, I get them once a year, maybe. I'll get a few ulcers. I'm like, what is going on over here? I'm just assuming. I never yeah. thought, never heard anyone ask or talk about this before. So I'm very curious, though, in your thought. Yeah, ulcers are uh, very painful inflammations in your gum, and they're most likely linked to um, any sort of entities. It's, I would say, 80% of all cases, it's viral. And this can wow. just be vi viral. Yeah, if you had, for example, for a lot of people, this happens in a, in a phase of a lot of stress. If you had a lot of stress ongoing, like maybe you're pushing it hard or whatever, and you're depleting your body of critical nutrients, most importantly of methylation, you might be under methylated. And what happens is if your body needs methyl donors and he needs it to work against the viruses, but if you use it, if you use too many of them, it will take it from the virus. The virus has time to grow a little bit and, and get activated. And then you get maybe an ulcer. So I see it as a B vitamin deficiency at the first fence, zinc, minerals, um, and just, just um, a bit of a sign of a stress stressor. And you can do so many things locally. Locally, you could maybe use a little bit of coconut oil and soothe it with something 
clove or peppermint, but you have to go from systemically. You have to see this, okay, there's an inflammation going on. My immune system is, is doing something that might be a virus, might be fungi, whatever. What, do my, what does my immune system now need? And then you just check your list. Okay, it might need vitamin D3, a little bit more K2, might need the critical things um, that are anti-inflammatory like omega-3 fatty acids. And then you can go with a little bit more lysine against the viruses and then always think about methylation. And, and as this is all class. Hmm? And a yeah. whole bag of clothes. <laughs> and that, yeah, but I, I just see it as a signpost. I see every symptom just as a signpost. That's it. And you should. Whatever disease you have, you have to understand. It's just a concept. There is no real disease. It's just your body out of sync, out of balance. And depending on what, um, a, how old you are or, or how long you're doing these things, it might be just... Um, the result of your lifestyle for the last couple of years and that you epigenetically were redesigned. And this is where we have to turn the clock backwards. And this is why we have so much reparation work to do right now still, because what I'm doing, we only, I've only taught 35 dentists so far to become a biology, specialist in biology dentistry and ceramic implants. And that's just, that's just the beginning. They, they, they have the high-tech skills. They can do the biocompatible things and they learn a little bit about nutrition, but all the next level things, this is just coming. And this is why I try to give all the information with causes and train, the, train all you guys out there, all patients, because you can start already. And I believe this gives a lot of value for everybody and also for the practitioner, which might not need to or wants to learn so many things that I learned over the last 20 years, because this is how long I do these things. But I believe it's very much important. And luckily, luckily, so 10 years ago, I was heavily attacked with all my ideas. And when I wrote my book, it's over there, it's called It's All in Your Mouth, um, most likely for my dental colleagues, because new ideas and innovations are always go through three stages, as you know. They first, uh, Belittled, then attacked, and then they become self-evident. Oh, now, Sh like Schopenhauer believe, philosophy. <laughs> that's Schopenhauer. I love that one. It, it totally, it totally fits also on my biological dentistry approach. And, and it's still in the, it's still for, I would say, it's in the percentages. It's not even in the single digits of all dentists doing something like this. It's more like this 0 0.1 people and I need to bring it into let's say at least five percentage or ten to really change something and I believe that this starts with you guys because you get the information and then you learn on your body you do the 80 percent and then you look for biological dentists that work this way and this is why it's also very good for all dental colleagues out there that you understand you can still do your, pre your high high tech level dentistry and the craftsmanship but you just need to upgrade a few things, like learn about the whole body, and then the whole, your whole daily work changes. I don't have any stress in my office. I only accept patients that are 100% committed, that are on this health journey, kind of friends of mine. That means I don't have a general office full of patients that hate me as a dentist because it might be big. It's the opposite. They prepare. They look forward to it. We just have a good time healing. And this is really amazing it's fulfilling now and this is what every dentist should experience too and every patient too this is why it's on it's my mission to to share this with you guys yeah, every you dentist know. needs to hear this yeah every right and every dentist needs to hear this stuff i'm so powerful then what are you most passionate about like you what are you most passionate about what really brings like set your soul on fire yeah you what are you most yeah I would say that you could call me a, I'm a creator or I'm an artist and creator. And I like to build things. I like to build systems that help many people with problems that I faced. For example, I was chronically, I was chronically sick very um, early on or not as healthy as I wanted to be. And this led me to this journey. And this is why I learned all these things. And basically all the systems I designed are for people like this, that they have it easier because 20 years ago, I couldn't just call me and say, hey, dude, what should I do? I'm not feeling well. I'm like depressed and feel like shit. What can I do? And everybody told me nothing. So I had to search for it. So creating and building systems that help many people. And by that, changing the way how dentistry and medicine is done. This is the impact that I like to do. This is probably what I'm most passionate about. 
building health cities, health villages, whatever, say offline as well as online to read, for example, like a health book or whatever, that, um, that people can just learn and, and be educated about their daily things. This is really what sparks my fire. Every single person that I help to transform, that's fulfilling. Obviously, I'm a very high-skilled surgeon, and, I, and that was important. I mean, an important step for me in order to bring this knowledge to the general dentistry. I was I needed to have something very skilled, which is the ceramic implantology. And now all these magazines ask me, okay, can you write articles about nutrition? All these things it took me a while. It took me really a while and a lot of punches. And but now. I love to create. I just love to build. That's why we built the center in, in, my, in my, my clinic even better as a full concept that we can later copy. And I'm also very passionate about working with like-minded wolves. And why? Because I believe in co-elevation. Co everything that I systemize, we can use, and then we use everything the other guy has systemized. Like Tim, you, you, connected, you were connected to me through Tim, through our uh, um, friend. Tim is the ultimate connector of all the wolves. He has the Health Optimization Summit upcoming in, it's the 28th to 29th of May, where all of you guys should come to, because there is the community. I believe in community building, kind of like a hippie structure, but instead of being just hippies, we will have villages where we can decide what health strategy we will learn and where we can go to as families, and maybe start with just the nutrition side of things, learn from each other, and maybe some can go have their biological dentistry treatment. The others can hop into, like, let's say ayahuasca treatments, like upgrading the whole experience. But mm -hmm. by that, working with the same level of character, the people that are really pushing it and, and are able to create and not driven by their egos anymore. Maybe I needed a big ego to become very good in my field, but to, in, in order to make a mission, you have to be yourself. And this is when you co-elevate and when you share. And when you share and then build together, then it's going to be big. And this is what, um, this is what I'm passionate about, really making a big move. Dr. Don, thank you for being alive, man. Like, seriously, thank you for being alive, going through all those struggles, all of that stuff, learning that high-level skill, busting your ass through like all the schooling, all the grinding, learning all the different things to bring this to the forefront, man. I just, it's, it's overwhelming. And it's really like awesome that you're actually like leading the forefront of it to push it through as best as possible. You said you only want five to 10% of dentists, a hundred percent of dentists should all know this stuff, man. And it's so powerful that you're actually putting this work in. So a huge thank you and massive acknowledgement to you, man, for doing all this stuff. Thanks, man. Thanks. Yeah, I give my best on a daily basis. The, I believe that's what we all should do in order to succeed and to inspire people. When you give your best out there on a daily basis for whatever it is, you will inspire other people to do the same. And this is what we need to do. And obviously, therefore, help people out of like negative emotions to become more powerful because all of us are here on this world to do something amazing if they know how to and maybe some need a leader to do to show them yeah but i'm happy to align with all the other wolves and you and everybody who is out there to yeah to bring to bring knowledge and because it's just an amazing life that you're living that's it how how, how bad it is for so many people that are just in the rut that are, they didn't understand what their ego is and that they're just in a, the wrong emotion side but that they can, they could change it if they had just had the tools to have to do it, and it all starts with the foundation, which is your body. I truly believe that we have to uh, make the body healthy first, and then build a mind and spirit. It is truly possible to go the other way around, but I believe it's way more difficult. Having a healthy body makes the connection to the matrix super easy. Where, Dr. Where Dom, I, you understand what I mean? Yeah, I have. See this hierarchy right behind me. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I, I created this for coaching because I, I coach like entrepreneurs to, you know, hold them at a really high standard, uh, standard become the best version of themselves. And I literally have written there, like, you won't be able to see it, but it's physical body first. And I've written body, mind, and spirit, the first things yes. to work on before you start working on the rest. And we specifically like work on those to get them in optimal so then people can start, as you mentioned, it's getting them to above zero. 
so they can start working towards optimal health. And that's not just physically, but mentally, emotionally, and spiritually as well, and understanding your own big goals so that you can move forward and do that. So thank you for saying that because that validated me and it made me feel really good. <laughs> And I learned it shouldn't be that cost because there were so many women in there and they were on their journeys and a lot of them get into the spiritual side of things and you can, and it's really important because it's actually all one thing. Like you show in your pyramid, it's one, it's body, mind and spirit. But if the basis is rotten, spirit is hard to go through. So if you clean it all out, like you come to earth, a child is kind of connected always yeah. way more. It's way more conscious than you think you are the unconscious guys. Because you're so <laughs> Yeah, you have so many layers on top of you, so many belief systems, so many things that you learn that might be not, that might be holding you back from your spiritual side of things. Because when you're in spirit, then you're yourself. Whenever you start thinking and all these things, you're not yourself. You're just blocking yourself. And that's why all the nice ideas come when you're under the shower or when you're like <laughs> driving a car, when you're not thinking actually. Yeah. It is really important. like a kid. I always look back to my little kids and watch them and they're just so... Um, curious and they have so many great ideas that might be killed by all the ones that say that's not possible anything is possible i believe it's yeah. really i couldn't agree more so i've got a question with you when people are sort of at that stage in their life where they've started to get some success and some things are starting to go like well and they're now focusing on inwards okay i want to invest in myself now what would you encourage people to have a look at or do how they should start? Yeah, they really want to that at that stage, like, cool, I'm gonna start investing in themselves. Let's have a good basis, they eat okay, they uh, sleep okay, they train okay, works good though. And uh, now they're like, cool, I wanna invest in myself now. Don't know what to do, what should I do? What I, what I would always do is hire somebody who is experienced in this, get a coach first, like somebody who has, has been done there. Tony Robbins would always say success Lose. Look for somebody who already had success. Could be a could be a doctor, could be a coach, a trainer, whatever, and then learn from them. But take baby steps. Just the first thing is you have to decide: Are you going to do? Are you going to embark on this journey? Why? Why are you doing this? I believe because you want to have the best possible life, the most health, abundance, whatever you decide. You just create your why. And then you want to have the results. Some people maybe just want to have a nice aesthetic body first, which is maybe a good entrance for people. And then along this way, they will discover, oh, wow, it's easier if I'm getting healthy because then my hormones work and then I can train. And this is a very good analogy. So a lot of you guys out there, you're training your ass off, you're doing everything in the gym and you still have not the results you would like to have. Just see it as a pile of wood. If the wood is wet, whatever, whatever fire you would put in there, it doesn't spark. What you need to have is like a dry wood and then a little spark works. And the dry wood is a healthy body. Yeah. And to, for this, you have to basically, and I'm giving this analogy to Justin McQuire again. He, he told, he has this one. You have to be healthy. And this is what I had to learn. I started with the, with the training and with the workouts because I, I just felt that I need something to perform, but my mental was what crashed so over time i learned everything about health and realized okay if you start now the results i had in 20 years you probably can do it in, in one and a half year if you have the right people who tell you how to time this this is where people with experience come in this is why we go to the clinic and i time you and stack you the different things it's great to do hyperbaric but if you can stack it with the right iv protocol based on your on your blood work and then add in low level laser therapy and maybe do the sauna after it or rectal ozone, it might be even better. But you need to know and how to time these things. Same with nutrition, same with training. And this is really where coaches come in. I'm always working with a coach myself or with any sort of doctors because you need this outside point of view. Invest in yourself, throw the money out of the window or just to get it back yeah, so that it comes back and um, double. Um, Hashtag optimal health <laughs> dr dom where can people find you where can they which website what's your, your, your instagram where can people find your stuff yes the easy the really the easiest to to find me is on instagram it's dr dome dr d-o-m-e-n-1 the one dr dom one 
if you go in the bio, there's a link to a tap bio and the tap bio brings you to my clinic. It brings you to a new patient section, it brings you to my book, to the YouTube channel. It brings you to various resources, tons of podcasts. And I believe also the, the Instagram in itself is kind of like my personal health magazine uh, where I just put out various topics that interest me or that help you guys. So this is the easiest to so find me. Definitely someone you want to be following. So I'll link that down below. So before we leave, I would just like you to challenge the listeners because it's all good to learn all this stuff, but if you're not putting it into practice or doing anything, then it all just stays up here in your head. So if you were to challenge um, everyone who's listened to this podcast to do one thing either today or this week when they've listened to it, what is one thing that you would challenge them to do? Yeah, the one thing I would challenge you to do is decide how your life is going to look like and if you or that you should invest in optimal health and design a strategy where you start to have little baby steps and milestones along this way. I, I think you need to start this right away. And you can use tons of these information that we provide all of us um, out there to, to boost it. And it's about just a little investment, just baby steps decided. And I would always start with nutrition because it's the easiest. Yeah, because this is what you do on a daily basis. Is that cool? Dr. Dom, that's amazing. Thank you so much for coming onto the show. Thank you for having me.